Hello, everybody. Welcome to Indigo Terra Odyssey. I thought I'd let you look at the rich, fun, lush background before I place your three card choice in front of us. And today we're going to be using the beautiful deck by Rebecca Campbell, um, her Work Your Light Oracle cards. I've been wanting this deck for a long, long time. And every once in a while, I like to just make myself wait. I'm like, you already have 8,000 decks. So I find it really important and I want to thank my patrons for all their contributions and you guys when you come on my super chats as well that helps me afford all this deck because it creates a library with the books of information and some of the books are just so profound in their knowledge and messages that it always kind of reinstills that love, hope, light and initiation to try harder, learn more, um, expect you know, all the best in things. When I read these things in, in these books, I feel so expansive and light and beautiful and able to translate and share this with you guys and just let you know that every single day when we try a little bit better to come from our soul's place, our heart's place, we're able to think more clearly and ascertain what's good for us and release things that aren't. And I always knew I had a strange kind of connection to this deck. And it's one of those things where I knew I would order at the optimal time and the messages came today. It's the day before Ian's birthday. His birthday is tomorrow. So I'm so excited for him. I'm actually taping on a Friday night. So when I put this up, it may actually be his birthday. And um, I feel like all excited about that. I love to celebrate people. And he just got a new car. He's all excited. A Volkswagen T something. It's not a Torag. It's something else. I don't know why I can't remember it. But uh, I'll take a picture of it and I'll post it on Instagram. Listen, you guys, I would like anybody, if you're not already following me on Instagram, come on over there. It is Sparkwist11. I'm having all kinds of contests and jewelry giveaways. I've already done a couple free readings. I'm going to give some decks away. I'm really impressed with this new deck I received. And I'm going to order some of these and have giveaways with them the karma cards the book is awesome it really helps you to understand your houses astrology some really remarkable things in this deck and something else that just came across it just fell into my kind of like viewpoint so I was very excited so I'm going to lay out your three cards for you and again this is going to be the work you're like you guys have probably seen this more often than not from other um, readers I've seen it time again and I'm like oh I need to get that deck for our so our first choice is going to be dance with life do something to change your energy I had to do this today oftentimes we get in discussions with family members friends or whatever and the energy kind of takes us to a place that's heavy at times we're trying to find resolutions and what we have to do is move a muscle change a thought and start to feel better I did the last thing I wanted to which was to go to the gym and I'm still wearing like my gym clothes if you can see I have my gym clothes on and I was like I've got to go work out and really move a muscle and change a thought because I was getting in my headspace and my feelings and emotions and as I've been saying what's most important for us lately is to be bigger than our environment to be bigger than our mood to be bigger than whatever is ailing us or niggling inside our head and trying to get us to get low or hysterical or off balance or melancholy any of those things exercise really works for me looking at artwork and exercise but um, more often than not, I need to exercise every single day just being a Sagittarius I can I can start to act like a caged animal if I don't have that so this is about doing something to change your energy in a very um, positive way right playing guitar I find like strumming on a guitar is like oh it's heavenly right so comment down below what you do to um, change your energy, to get your um, vibration raised, to get your frequency up there. Singing, dancing. I love water too. Going in salt water is like, oh my gosh, there's something about that that's amazing to me. The next card, number two, is going to be the initiation, rite of passage, crossing the threshold. Look at that beautiful. I love dark gray with pop and lavender, purple and turquoise. I love that combination. And look at the lightning coming in. You know, sometimes we have to walk through what looks like a scary gateway to have a deeper, richer understanding of where we're going. And we have to release that fear. I read this thing earlier that made so much sense to me. Sometimes fear is an indicator that we're going in the right direction. We have that anticipation of the unknown. The unknown is the only way we grow change, not being, letting go of familiar patterns and, um, familiarity is how we grow. So we need oftentimes to um, take, go through the initiation to learn things to grow. And number three is share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution, expression. If you're ever feeling down and low and, um, you know, you feel misunderstood or your parents um, don't think that, you know, you're the winning child because you're not going to Princeton or you're not going to be a Wall Street broker or this and that. A lot of creatives 
feel this at times persecuted by their family, they're like, yeah, that's a really valid um, future for you being a stand-up comedian or being a poet or whatever. A lot of times they're not um, universally supportive of the creatives because it takes a lot of work. It takes um, dedication. And sometimes it is the biggest dreamers and um, artists that have the hardest times because we don't get instant reward, right? It's about ideas, theories, growth, the magic that's out there to tap into and bless all of you that have the soul and wherewithal and see through to do anything to make your first candle. I remember when Lisa was, she sent me that birthday cake candle and the smell of that was so, so wonderful. And I just did a, did a read for this fantastic woman who wants to begin her own candle business. And, you know, she just really touched my heart. And any of you guys that are going out and you're fulfilling your dreams, you're actualizing them first by identifying what they are. And then you're taking focused steps with intention to see them through. And it's remarkable. And there will be fear involved. I've got to say for myself, too, I gave away. Uh, I had to give up and it wasn't a sacrifice, a job, you know, a full time job with benefits, but it was going nowhere and it was filled with frustration and lazy people and a lot of disappointment and backbiting and really um, some, you know, bad energy. And I'm really sensitive to energy. I mean, almost to the point where it was like hazardous. So sometimes we have to move on and we have to get out of our comfort zone and we have to have a bigger perspective that what's waiting for us is magical. Okay, you guys. So I hope you guys like my nails. What do you think of my put on blue and then I put on silver and I was like, I want to have something that like catches the light really weird. So I put on a little speck of red and it almost looks like a gem in there. I'm like, I'm too fancy for my own existence. Everybody get out of my way. Beyonce, I'm coming over. <laughs> I was just like, um, after I was this emotional setback today of, you know, just you know, relatives and stuff and people sometimes I heard this too. And I thought it was great when people put themselves in an empress position and they just give and give and give. And sometimes we have to realize, pull back and let them come to you. Don't, you know, you can't give from an empty table. And I had kind of overextended everything that I could emotionally. And I just hit this point where I was like, I need to have a moment of quiet and calm and rebalance and go to the gym and laugh and be silly. And it really helped. So this is about, you know, do something to change your energy right there. So those are our three choices. Let me know what you guys think of this deck too. I've always been in love with it. I'm such a weirdo. It's like, I'm, I got to get it. I got to get it. And I put it in my basket and I keep it for, you know, a freaking century. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll get that deck. Oh, I see it every day. And I'm like, I lust for it. I'm like, oh, look at that. I love Rebecca Campbell. She's phenomenal. I have some of her other decks just amazing. So let's see what's going on with this dance of life. We're going to begin after my little repertoire of chatty chatkins. But I just, you know, I feel like I know you guys so well and I love your comments. You're so beautiful. I feel like, you know, you're part of my soul family. And sometimes it's nice to just talk to people from really authentic headspace because I see all of this and I feel, I feel your struggles. I feel your triumphs. I feel you guys trying. And just like you, I am a creature of habit and I go back in those old patterns and I'm like, whoa, you're going to get the exact same result. So how about that medical? cognition where you are actively stopping, observing and saying a new way, a better way, a new day. You know, we don't want the same results, the same emotions, the same. We don't want such high predictability because then we lose the magic, right? We lose the reach, the new perspective, that horizon that we haven't reached yet. We always want to try and um, scale that mountain in a different way for a different, beautiful view, right? So let's see what it says about dancing with life. I love this so much. So for you, group one, you know, this is an indicator that life is always moving. You know, if we resist the change and the flow of everything, our energy becomes stagnant and we fall out of flow with the universe. Again, those patterns, that repetitiveness, all of that. The universe has a mysterious intelligent force. It's kind of a natural rhythmic beat and it governs all of life. So one of the best ways to really shift your energy and frequency and vibration is to put some music to it and dance along with it. I start my day every single day with reggae and something about that beat. I love it. Jazz, anything that um, really gets me hopping. I love Florence and the Machine for certain moves. Uh, she's one of my favorites. Pink is my all-time favorite um, artist of everything. I just love her. She's so empowered and beautiful because when we dance on restraint, our spirit really takes over. And with each new bop, sway, or kick, you know, we're rocked back into harmony with the rest of the life. And oftentimes we connect with those lyrics. And I feel like that's something that's going to happen to you. You're going to kind of have your soul song. And when you turn it on, you envision your best self, your best path, where you're going, how to do it, all of that. There's something, there's magic to music that is just almost unfathomable how it transports us. Certainly 
certain music and lyrics, I'll just start crying. I'm like, that's unbelievable. Forget it. Credence Clearwater Revival or Simon and Garfunkel. Turn those faucets on. Those are some of my other favorite singers. So really get unstuck by doing something that shifts your vibration. Put on that music and dance unrestrained and really get back into the frequency of your life. Because when we do that, our body learns how to be moved by intuition and it's connected to that kind of systematic beat. And, you know, if dancing isn't your thing, then do something that you wouldn't usually do to shift energy. I always love, I tell people, get a few things of watercolor around and just one simple notebook and just start creating something. You get in that headspace. And since we create direct through source and we're a conduit then of expression, it's so healthy. Whatever it is, you know, that makes you feel good and expressive and alive. And I always love, you know, to really goof out and I'll probably film one day. I'd love to do me in India, like in our fairy wings, just dancing around being total like fruit balls of fun and just having a good time like oh my gosh we put on all my jewelry and and crowns and fairy wings it just is going to be incredible (laughs) that sort of thing it helps us get unstuck and there's sometimes the joy and silliness of dance and music to dance all crazy is so fun right do something to change your energy. And I'm telling you, you can change you this mood. Have you ever just had a conversation with somebody and they dump all their emotions on you, whatever it is? Oh, this happened to me at work. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. You feel like you've been dragged through the mire and just left there with everybody's emotions. Some people are unaware and they do that, you know, unbeknownst to themselves. They're not trying to harm you. However, you're left carrying that bag and all of a sudden you feel heavy and you're whatever. Uh, what I say to myself right away is these emotions do not belong to me. I'm bigger than this environment. I'm bigger than somebody else's emotions that they dropped at my doorstep. I call Amazon, please return this package lovingly to the sender. That sort of thing. This energy does not belong to me. Cause sometimes it can be cloying, right? We can't figure out um, everybody's emotional state for them. Sometimes when they just sit with it, again, it's that empress. You can't bring everything in because it'll burden the kingdom type of thing. You have to allow to you that selectiveness of what really needs your attention and oftentimes if we allow ourselves to become that agony aunt people will always bring their luggage to our door so we have to learn to say no to that as well because we want portals of joy and light and understanding all of that I'm a different sort of breed that I encourage that through social media because I can address these issues when I have time, when I'm in the mental capacity. I tell everybody, you ever have an issue, something's going on, you feel like you want to do something in your life and you don't have the support of your family and you want that one person in the dark to really hear you and care, I am there. I will definitely do that, but I have to do it my own capacity, time, and headspace. I'll look at everything. I check every DM, I check every email, and I answer as quickly as I can on any issues anybody's having. I'm able to do that, but I'm able to clear that energy, separate, and do it when I have the bandwidth to do it, right? But sometimes friends don't know that, and what will happen is you'll be dancing with life, having a good old time, and here comes, you know, dreary Diana with her suitcases full of emotional baggage and leave it at your doorstep. We do have to protect ourselves from that. And I felt like that energy was coming because I feel like a lot of you are trying to help friends or family members and they're, they probably will heed your advice. But what happens is they are just bringing on that. They turn that faucet on. They don't know when to turn it off. You are not their, um, agony on. And sometimes it's like, we need to know we want, um, joy and fun and, and, and reciprocity in a relationship, right? So you're really learning that. So I love that. So I'm just doing one fun card each. Cause I'm probably going to do a couple readings today. And I just wanted to introduce this deck. And at the end, if you guys want to sit through, um, I'll do a quick flip through because the artwork is mind blowing. And again, you guys, just as a reminder, um, I'm going to, I have a couple of places left in a couple of weeks. I go to England and I'm going to do some private Stonehenge readings right on the ancient um, grounds with the stones in the background. Um, you get your own deck that I use there, a crystal that I do that. And I upload it that probably when I'm still in England that night after I do it and I send it to you. So if you have any questions or you're interested in that, um, there's like two or three spots left. So you can email me. I'm so excited about them already, like checking out some beautiful Lumerian crystals for that. I'm super stoked. So yeah, and I'm probably, I love this deck so much for this. I'm probably going to bring this deck with me and just kind of, um, hang out with it. I really love it. So that's you guys. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to press like and subscribe and all my links are down below. If you want to um, have a private reading, find out about Stonehenge. Um, all this jewelry that you always see me wearing, um, I make and then I place it in my Etsy store. My link is down below for that too. Remember, come see me on Instagram and come get these prizes and these free reads. Just by following me, you're 
entered in all of it. I have fun little ways that I choose winners. Nobody ever knows. It's very spontaneous. Some weeks I do like a draw a day. It's like, I'm just really, I want January to be give back month. So now we're on to number two, which is the initi initiation, rite of passage and crossing the threshold. This is probably one of my um, favorite um, pieces of artwork in this. I just like the um, the contrast of the really dark and the gray and the murky outer world that looks like post-apocalyptic. You see the snakes, you see everything and the scrolling. And there's kind of like a beautiful, hopeful utopia on the other side. After we let go of ego, after we let go of self and we realize the world, the universe and spirit does support us, that we can have that kind of full card energy of I am divinely supported and loved. And I'm going to give in to my whims and my dreams and try and have hope and love regardless. I know you guys, sometimes the world seems like the whole friggin' world is on fire. I can't even look at the images of Australia anymore. It's such a special heavenly place. I start to cry. We have Trump just being an, an insane maniac. You know, there's just so much going on around the world that I'm still hopeful because I feel like more than ever, we need to have this rite of passage and initiate ourselves to bring hope and light to other people because the world will always undergo uh, um, radical changes. And that's when we need to people to hope and care the most, right? So the initiation, I love this is about you know, some of the most sacred initiation chambers and temples look really scary from the outside, right? But they are breathtakingly beautiful on the inside. You know, there's usually fresh flowers and amazing food and fruit offerings, you know, just spectacular, like some of the temples um, in the East are just remarkable. And this card represents the journey of the soul pilgrim that's required to take reach somewhere sacred, you know, but only the initiated can enter. Perhaps that's where you are right now. You're being tested. You're being initiated because you're headed somewhere sacred. Again, you probably are seeing tons of 1111s, 555s. Every once in a while, you just get this deep um, fear in the pit of your stomach. You're like, everything is so deep, different. And when you have this new understanding that everything is so vast and there's so much potential, um, that everything is limitless, it kind of feels like an abyss and you almost get vertigo. Some people are getting nauseous and then it passes. You don't actually get sick. Nausea does that. You're getting upgrades, all of this. I sometimes just, I get vertigo and I get dizzy. The ringing in my ear becomes very intense, stuff like that. Because initiations require that we cross a threshold, you know, from one world state of being to the next, the unbelieving to the believing, you know, we are called to face what scares us and be willing to lose it all in order to gain a new way of being safety of security and depth of meaning. I mean, I was like, buy job, buy benefits, buy everything. And I was like, I want to walk into this spectacular new light of helping other people understanding the deeper meaning of life and how to access all that magic and beauty and power that resides in everybody. And one of the reasons that I, it's crazy with this timing with Martin Luther King Day coming up. I remember years ago, I took my kids, we did this volunteer thing where it was clean up the city. It was Martin Luther King Day. And we went into this big arena and everybody was, we had quizzes about Martin Luther King and, you know, they showed his speech. And I just thought that is so impactful and amazing and brave of someone to go and knowing that any minute they could be shot, killed, hurt, um, to help their community rise and to have that kind of golden light and drive and, you know, that initiation to be powerful and to believe in yourself and have courage. And that's part of the reason that vision kept coming to my head when I was ever in a place where I thought I couldn't do something. I'm like, if a man like that can do that and move a nation and, and create these words and this power and this majesty, I was like, and everybody has that capability. If you love people, if you come from heart, if you come from courage, everybody has that, right? And you're probably in this rite of passage right now. It's going to really mark a shift for you. Um, it can take the place of emotional turmoil, loss, grief, devastation, you know, and then all of a sudden that hardship that our heart had cracks open, our spirit is invested in us to really step forward. We take the sacred voyage into more of who we are and who we came here to be. It can be really painful and scary, but once we begin it, we're more ourselves than ever before. And all of a sudden there's such clarity and light and understanding. It takes so much for me to have a short temper or um, dislike somebody now because I realize if somebody says something that's um, unfortunate or backbiting or whatever, I see it exactly for what it is. An insecure person that might not be awake yet or have greater understanding or may want something that I have or achieved. And I'm always more than happy to help people in their journey whenever I can. But I see it from a perspective now instead of feeling like, um, I have to shut that person down or, um, you know, 
roar like a lion over them and, and cause fear or anxiety, what I do is I immediately turn to empathy and love and saying, this person doesn't have an awareness of self yet that helps them, you know, gravitate towards their best mindset, their best life goals. And I immediately have love and, and compassion for that as opposed to how I used to be when I was younger, like, just shut the hell up and get away from me. I don't need to hear your crap. You know, now I'm like, wow, you know, this person hurt, people hurt. And it's one of those things. And the initiation helps us with that. So we're rarely angry. We really, really are. And it's a really wonderful feeling. You're always kind of in the middle of the road and you're ready to negotiate life's little bumps and terms without losing your mind. It's really cool. So if you're in the middle of initiation right now, you're going to get through it. And one day soon, you're going to bless the thing that broke you down and, and cracked open your world because you're going somewhere sacred. It's going to be worth it. And you're closer than you think, you know, cross that threshold. If you're in a job you absolutely hate and you feel undervalued and people are not kind to you and they don't treat you wonderfully, good day to you, sir, that type of thing. I want you to just really see the artwork and this is so beautiful. Um, if you are in a relationship where that person doesn't respect you and they treat you like property or they don't really value your opinion and really listen to you when you speak, draw those boundaries. It's time for change. It's time for you to stand up for the beautiful, wonderful, unique person that you are and always gravitate towards people, places, and things that show you that they value you and love you because you deserve that. And you're going to see things. I mean, the clarity that's going to come with this is astounding. You don't get so angry. You're not quick to judge. Um, you can take so much because you can deflect it. You know, it doesn't belong to, again, you're bigger than your environment and your emotions. And it's really beautiful. So I love that energy for your group too. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to press like and subscribe. And all my links are down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. And all you subscribers were right on the, the precipice of 41,000 subscribers, which is amazing and friggin' mind blowing to me all the time. Like I rarely look at all that stuff. And then when I see it, I'm like, whoa, how, how is things getting there. Usually people tell me and I'm like, damn, it's very exciting. It's so nice because um, I work hard on these videos. I work hard. I research stuff. I have to get in a good headspace. And I love having dialogue with you guys. You're absolutely amazing. And I, I can't thank you enough. Again, I have a whole bunch of links down below if you want to check out stuff. I'm the Goddess Provisions box, my Instagram. I'm having contests over there just by following me, you're always entered in all of them, the jewelry ones, the free reads, everything. It's January great giveaway. So much fun. I love doing that. And thank you guys for all your great feedback and wearing my jewelry that I sent you and um, all the lovely words about your readings. I'm so exciting for you guys. I mean, damn, people are just, again, the initiation is for realsies. So beautiful group two. Now we're on to number, this is beautiful too, this artwork. I'm not even gonna be able to sleep tonight. I'm just gonna be staring at these cards for eons. Um, number three is share your voice, you know, come out of the cave persecution. It's time for you to express yourself. You have a lot of great ideas. You have a lot of, um, you know, influential energy that you probably don't know about. This happens a lot. People are like, what, what difference can I make? Every single person, even if it's one person making a difference, that one person that's willing to sit there in the dark and listen and lend a hand, it makes, it can change a life. It can save a life. It's, it's very, very real. It's very substantial in someone's life, especially to be there for your children and your best friends and have love and compassion and patience for them. I've had a few people tell me, you know, my mom says, I'm never going to have my soulmate or love. I don't deserve this. I'm never going to pass this course at college. And I thought, oh my God, the damage that gets done to these young people by the impatience of their elders is heartbreaking at times. So any of you guys that are teenagers listening, any of you guys that, you know, you're in school and you're, you're not hearing words of kindness or support from family members, just know that's a fear driven response. All of a sudden they want what's best for you, but it can be damaging when it comes from a place of fear. They just have haven't actualized the effect. And again, it's that repetitive pattern. It's their subconscious. They probably heard it from their parents. Um, it's that, that parent that says, don't climb that tree. You're going to fall and break your arm. Instead of that parent that says, wow, I'm really proud of you for doing that. Be careful of your next step. We really have to choose our words carefully. Our children, our relatives are very sensitive to what we say. Words have power and energy. So, you know, share your voice and do it in a really gracious, loving, caring way come out of this cave. Right now, you're being called on to share your voice. Maybe you're speaking up in a relationship or through writing, speaking, singing, or some other form of creative expression, um, things like that. 
Uh, we each hold a truth deep within us that longs to be expressed. That's I felt such an urge to do this. There was no other course in my life once I began this. I was like, not not only, you know, it's cathartic for me, but I realized that I was, whenever I did this at work or other places, people were like, well, can you tell me more about that? And then I would want to research stuff. And I thought it was great. And I feel like everybody has a genre a something that they love and who doesn't love a golden story of hope that belongs solely to them when they get to write it because they hear somebody tell them it's available to you and once when I heard that from a reader I'm like that's my vocation that's that's what I need to do I'm like I've always been able to read tarot on the cards and channel but I'm like to inspire hope and do it a very unique way with my own um you know, channeling and I have just kind of an earthy grounded approach. It's also therapeutic because I love Colette Barron's read, Colette Barron Reed's approach that it also has to be prescriptive as well as predictive because we have to give people the tools and knowledge to work with it, right? Why would I go this way and give them some answers, right? Psychological um, tools to work with for sure because we each have this wonderful deep truth that wants to be expressed, sculpted for lifetimes. The voice of our soul isn't it's like nothing else. It carries this wisdom that can be gained through our soul history, through our growth, by remembering and tapping into this, this unique tone. We not only heal ourselves, but we also heal the planet at large. Young people need to hear this. I used to love to babysit and, you know, the kids would be like, Melanie, what does clouds taste like? And I would make up all kinds of dynamic, crazy stuff. I was like, oh yeah, that, that's like... <laughs> I'd be like, it's, I would just say the weirdest thing. And we would laugh. And the parents would be like, did you tell Sheila that clouds taste like bananas and, and fried onions? And I'd be like, yeah, don't you think that's great? And they'd be like, oh my God, I'm never going to hear the end of it. And we'd laugh. Like all of that, that beautiful, crazy perspective of being um, creative and having fun and sharing your voice. And I, you could, because you la unlock something in the universe and you call a missing piece of you home, right? Your individual voice is the most powerful sound current on the planet. If you've kept your soul's voice silence or held back, chanting or singing can be life-changing for you too. I do this when I'm driving because I don't particularly love traffic or, or horn honking. I'll just, um, and I'll, I'll do that over and over and I get this sense of peace and calm. You know, as we shed all these layers of our personality and we start letting our unique soul speak through us, we really discover that we have a very clear message that longs to be shared, right? The more we speak it, the clearer it gets. I find as I go along with this, I can do a reading anywhere at any time and never get distracted and channeled. I love it. I I put my focus and my energy in it. It's just something I do extremely well in focus because I love it so much. And that's all I'm doing when I'm doing it. I'm just hearing and thinking. And oftentimes I don't even know what I say in my videos until I watch them later. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> you know what I mean? And sometimes I'm like, that's a really good point. It's something I've read again, as you guys know, I can like speed read and I download all this information. I forget about it and it comes back up when it's necessary. It's like a little kind of, um, like a little steel trap in your mind. You open like Sherlock says, it's his mind palace. And you go, in there and you're like, this would be perfect for this scenario or this person or whatever. And your soul and your mind and everything in the energy and spirit points you in the right direction. You retrieve that information. It becomes helpful to the person that needs it. And there you go. You're going to be able to do that as well. And I want you to use Marissa Peer's technique of telling yourself with dialogue, I have an excellent memory. I can recall whatever I need whenever I need it. My mind is like Google. I'm going to Google this fact. I'm going to find out about that. Our mind is much more efficient than we give ourselves credit for. So say that to yourself. You know, our mind believes what we tell it. Our brain says, you're right. I am smart. I can recollect whatever I need. So express yourself and share your voice. Speak to those who can hear you. There's never been a better time in history than right now to rise up. The world is sometimes feel like it is on fire and going to hell faster than I can even calculate. And everybody with these World War Three things coming on and the fires and all of that, that's when we need to help each other, support each other, speak our light, our powerful. If you feel fearful, know you're not alone. The world really need your unique tone in order to harmonize right now. As we each rise up and we share our song, we make it easier for the next person to do the same. And I always encourage everybody, if you want to start a channel or, or speak on spirituality or light working, I will help you in any way, shape or form I can, because I had wonderful mentors when I was coming up. And once you do one, you realize, hell, that was easy. I'm going to do another and another and things get um, tighter and clearer and more together and more harmonized. And then you feel the power of your voice and you ascend and it's really beautiful. And I see a lot of you guys do have that capacity. You're light workers, you're healers, and you're ready to roll. So beautiful energy group three. Oh, I really love these cards in this reading. The channeling is really beautiful. 
If you're new to my channel, welcome, you guys. Thank you so much for stopping and listening to my read. I really appreciate it. You can check out one or 500 of my other videos, <laughs> and all my links are down below. Um, I do private readings. Again, um, if you want to find out about my Stonehenge, that's coming in a couple weeks. It's going to be so killer. I'm so excited. I'm going to have to take a, a horse tranquilizer for that. I feel like I'm just going to... I told you today, I'm bringing a shovel. I'm going to dig up in there. I'm going to jump in the hole and just sit there for a while. I hope England doesn't mind. <laughs> So again, you guys, all my links are down below. Anything that you need, come out of that cave, you guys. You know, it's time for you to express yourself. Everybody has a unique take and viewpoint and everybody has something to say. So get out there and say it, you magical unicorn beast, you. So love and light, you guys. I'm going to go upload.